I'll begin with, if there's any children in the audience, you might want to get them out now. My name's Yale Cohen, and I'm the founder of Fuck Cancer. It's a movement that activates Gen Y to engage with their parents about early diagnosis. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware, but our society has a huge problem. It's something that affects us all. It doesn't discriminate based on your age, race, gender, or even political affiliation. And it kills millions every year. In 2008, 12 million people were diagnosed. Five million of them survived. And for seven million, it was fatal. We all know the killer here. And that's apathy. For all intended purposes, we've cured cancer. 90% of cancers are curable if caught in stage one, 95% in some cases. That's a remarkable efficacy rate, even for the best of treatments, and the closest we've been to a cure in years. Thank you. If it was the common cold, we'd considered it cured. Now, this isn't to say that research isn't very important and much needed, because we wouldn't even be at the 90% without it. It's just to say that this early detection is the best cure we have right now. So the problem now becomes apathy. The immediate search is a cure for apathy rather than a cure for cancer. We all know we should be looking for cancer, but aren't. Our collective hurdle needs to become overcoming our complacency in favor of much needed action. If 90% of cancers are curable in stage one, why are 50% still fatal? It's no longer solely the cancer we can blame. We have to take a look in the mirror and realize that we're aiding this beast in our indifference. Now, my story is far from unique, but I am uniquely positioned to talk about this because I overcame my cultural indolence for my mom. When my mom got abnormal mammogram results back, I became a woman possessed. I read every book, blog, and article I could get my hands on. And after the official diagnosis, uh, after a brief pause to let my heart break, I went right back to research and making my mom's treatment arrangements. For the first time in my life, I saw my mom as mortal, and I saw my dad cry. Is this really what it takes to elicit action in our apathetic era? I started Fuck Answer because it was something I could do. We're the generation of instant gratification and quizzical suspicion. If we can't do it ourselves or see it being done, you're hard-pressed to make us believe. I'm not a researcher, so I can't contribute scientifically, and I can't raise the billions of dollars needed to find a cure. But I can teach people how to cure 90% of cancers. Find them in stage one. I realized that if I can make curing cancer active rather than passive, we might just stand a chance. To me, this is great news. It puts the power back in our hands and gives us a call to action, which our generation thrives on. Now, I don't know if it was an emotional response or my need for control in a helpless situation, but something caused me to take action. So as I strive to create campaigns that shake people out of their complacency, I have to ask, why did I overcome my apathy? What works? Now, to me, there are three main reasons people choose to overcome their indifference, in no particular order. The first reason people choose action is ego. We, like every kid before us, think we know more than our parents. But for the first time in history, we just might. And that's because of this exponential growth in technology and education and sharing of information that's occurred in our lifetimes. I can tell my mom that there was an earthquake six seconds ago because of Twitter, where she has to wait for the six o'clock news. Our unprecedented sense of knowledge translates into a sense of responsibility. Responsibility to learn more about the things that matter, but more so to teach. We teach our parents more than any generation ever has. Whether it's trans fats or TiVo or that skinny jeans don't always flatter, why don't we teach them something that can save their lives? To overcome our apathy, we have to harness the sense of responsibility and galvanize it into a really positive change by teaching our parents. Another reason we choose action is because something is marketing. Uh, this isn't as corporate and capitalistic as it sounds, and I think that even Marx would be okay with it. And that's because marketing is an invaluable tool at getting people to take action. Good marketing cuts to the core of how we think, act, and choose to live, and makes people understand why this is pertinent to them. Using interruptive and unorthodox language in our campaigns has allowed us to break through to an audience that's becoming increasingly indifferent to the noise of media that surrounds them on a daily basis, particularly in the nonprofit space. We're so cause fatigued these days with cancer, AIDS, poverty, and a million other causes vying for our attention. What cuts through the clutter? Meaningful campaigns that resonate and make, make early detection personal are what will activate an otherwise apathetic population to take action. Another reason we choose action is because something makes us laugh. Now, this sounds simple, and it is. 
If we can laugh at something, we become comfortable talking about it, which is the first step to action. Now, humor is something very important to me personally, which is why our campaigns use humor to engage. Laughter is my family's best medicine. It's our bond, our love, and our therapy. And during my mom's treatment was no example, no exception, I should say. Uh, infectious bursts of laughter were a common occurrence. But apart from my personal fondness for humor, it's been highly effective at getting people talking. An inside joke at the office is that we're raised not to talk about our bodily functions and not to swear. Well, fuck that. We're going to do both. Because most of the earliest warning signs of cancer are seemingly benign and highly embarrassing. If you can't talk about it, you're likely, if you can't laugh about it, you're likely not going to talk about it. So I'm sure that most of you won't share your gas, nipple leakage, or inability to urinate with friends. But a lot of you will share that Snooki may think GTL is cool, but you shouldn't. Or your C cups turning into D isn't always a good thing. Or that your penis should grow, your ball shouldn't. When you've lost your sense of humor, you've really lost it all. To overcome our complacency, we have to be interested and engaged, which humor allows us to do, as well as to interact with cancer on a different level. Now, early detection isn't rocket science. It's about knowing your family history, your risk factors, and the earliest warning signs of cancer, and then knowing how to talk to your doctor and what specific diagnostic tests to ask for. But knowing that 90% of cancers are curable in stage one, what would you do when you leave here today? We will lead the charge on putting an end to late-stage cancer diagnosis in the same way that there have been paradigm shifts on how we think about drinking and driving, smoking and global warming. We're going to flip the switch on how we think about cancer, from something you wait to get and pray there's a cure to something you're actively looking for and finding when it's most curable. So if you won't change anything at all to prevent cancer, I need you to remember that 90% of cancers are curable in stage one. That's our fucking cure. <laughs>